Again, we Barack call all Yisrael, y'all, those yes. that are listening by the live stream. And again, those of you that have gathered here with us, we do Barack Yahweh for all that he has done and what he is doing, Yisrael, y'all. And I do want to say this, Yisrael, y'all, we have to, to uh, be sharp in these times because the enemy, he's very shrewd. And he would love to come in and distract us. You'd be surprised the small things that, or the, the small incidents that cause our minds to be taken away from what Yahweh has in store for us, Israel. Yah. Hallelujah. So let's keep our mind on him, on Yahshua HaMashiach. And as we're always saying, not so much what goes on out there, because the enemy, like I said, it, every time we have this type of a gathering, see, we don't believe the enemy or try to stick something in the cog or a monkey wrench, if I may say, to try to throw things out of order. But he does. Just as the eyes of Yahweh is upon his Sadiq, his righteous, on his eyes upon the righteous, you don't think the enemy is lurking trying to find a way in this right, y'all? Hallelujah. So we're not going to give him any way. We're not going to open the door that he come in and disrupt this, this right, y'all. Hallelujah. So what we have to do is keep our minds stayed on him. Hallelujah. And he shall direct our paths what we should do, how we should walk, and the direction that we should go in. Hallelujah. I do want to begin this concerning this Sukkoth, the thing, the abundance of Almighty Yahweh and Yahshua HaMashiach. So much abundance, Yisrael, Yah. And it's a privilege for me to even speak on these things and, and to, to somewhat spearhead this. Hallelujah. If there are other art that shall come with inspiration, with wisdom, with the words concerning the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. But I do want us to uh, start in Tehillim. Chapter 36, verse 5. I want to be begin reading. But before I begin reading there, let me give you a few definitions concerning abundance. An abundance. Overflowing fullness. There's great plenty. Now, a lot of these descriptions, they somewhat overlap themselves. Because really, the abundance of Yahweh and our mere English language, or what other language you may have, it really does not paint the picture, if I may say, of the abundance of Yahweh. Why? Because in this form of life, we're so limited in what we can see and what we can do and what we experience. But Yahweh is not limited, Yisrael Yah. Our love, or what we call love, is very limited. It's only to certain people, certain those that we, we know or we have respect for. Um, what we consider intelligence is very limited. But Yahweh is, is not limited. His Ruach HaKodesh, it is not limited. His Ahava, it is not limited. The Torah said that every morning that his mercies, they are what? Renewed. And we are people that wear, we wear things out. Clothes, we wear other people's patience, wear tools out, but you can't wear that out. Hallelujah. The mercies of Almighty Yahweh. Let me move on. It says great quantity or a great amount, a large number. And it also describes it as being a plentiful supply. It cannot run out. It does not run out. And also to abound. What is to abound? Abound is to replenish or to multiply. In an abundant fashion. And it cannot be hindered. It cannot be stopped. It just, keep, it just keeps reproducing, Yisrael. Oh, In which one delights, or a delight of a man or a person, yeah. of that which fills the lev, yeah. muchness. It describes it as being a force. Mm. An abundance, exceedingly, to a great degree, yeah. also more than... Sufficient. The Dhamma of Yahshua is more than sufficient. Hallelujah. 
and it is a great source of sufficiency, and that in Yahshua HaMashiach. A great source of sufficiency, Israel. He's all that we need. All that we need, all that we find is in Yahshua HaMashiach and in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. So let us begin reading in Tehillim, chapter 36, verse 5, talking about the mercy again. It says, your mercy, O Yahweh, is in the Shemaims. When you look into the Shemaims, isn't it vast, Israel? It seemed like there's just so much space out there. During the light of day, our visuals are somewhat limited in what we can see. We only can see the, the clouds and, and so far into the, the Shemayims of the realm. But at night, you can see just a little farther. But what you're seeing are just the luminaries, the stars. And man tried to measure them in light years or whatever that foolishness is right, y'all. But the stars are very far. It cannot be expressed in numbers how far those stars are out there. But yet we can see those stars, Israel. Right, so it describes the mercy of Yahweh as being in the Shemayims. It's broad. It's spacious. And your imuna, it reaches unto the clouds. How many of us in here can reach the clouds? That's so far away. You cannot reach the clouds. Not on your own. You can't reach the clouds. Verse 6. He said, your siddiquah, your righteousness is like the great mountains, the Narah. The high mountains, yes. broad, strong, and they stand alone. The great mountains. And your judgments, they are great, deep. Yeah. Deep, Israel. How deep is deep? Man has tried to seek the depths of the oceans. And some believe they have gotten there, but they haven't got to the depths of the oceans, Israel. Right. They're places that man cannot, in his present form, yeah. he cannot survive in those conditions. Yeah. Yahweh has given us a limit. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. But his judgments, it says, they are a great deep. Yes. Oh, Yahweh, you preserve the sons of Adam yes. and beasts. Verse 6. Yes. He says, how excellent, how Yahweh, how excellent is your loving kindness. Yes. How beautiful. Can a price be put on it? What is the weight of it? The splendor of it? His excellence. And his love and kindness, Yisrael Yah. Oh, Yahweh. Therefore, the children of Adam put their nasha, their trust, under the shadow of your wings. Should not we put our trust in the shadow or the covering of Almighty Yahweh? What is that? Yahshua HaMashiach. It is the Torah, the misfire of Almighty Yahweh. His Sadiqah. Is our covering is right, yeah. So we put our trust under the shadow of his wings. Verse 8 as we move on. It says, and they shall be abundantly satisfied. With what? With the fatness. What is fatness? It is somewhat of excess. It is somewhat of an over flowing amount. A matter of fact, Israel, many times we view it as, if we look at this flesh, many of us have what's called excess. Excess of weight. Excess of fat. But what is the fatness of Almighty Yahweh? Don't you know that even as Israel, at one time when Yahweh required that an offering be given to him of the fatness of the lamb, of the goat. Yes. All that belonged unto Almighty Yahweh. Yes. And he shared that with no one. Yes. That offering was unto him. Yes. But yet the richness of his Torah, of its mishvah, the fatness thereof, he desires us to partake in that, Yisrael. Yes. And the fatness, and the abundance, and the much richness of his Torah. It's not, in our, it's not in what we can accumulate as riches on this earth, Yisrael. But it's of the essence of the heart of Almighty Yahweh that he gives. And how does he give it to us, Yisrael? He gives it unmeritedly. He gives it freely and abundance. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that excites my love. When the world try to, when that world gives you, or so say, give you something, they limit it. The lottery, it is limited. So many people have to pay into that to get a certain amount of money, and yet you have to pay a certain amount back. And you know what? You're going to spend it all anyway, so it's all going back in the system. So really, you haven't been given anything. And the things that you bought, guess what? You're not going to be able to keep that either. So it's just a cycle. But what Yahweh gives, no one, no man can take from you, Yisrael. The immunity that Yahweh gives you in abundance, nobody can feed off of that but just you, Yisrael. Hallelujah. He gives that to us freely. Why? That we may abound in his Torah, that we may grow, that we may multiply, that we may grow strong. That's what he desires of us, Yisrael. That's what he wants for his people. That we be a strong people, that we stand, that we are not moved or shaken by this world or by the attack of the enemy. They shall be abundantly satisfied in verse 836 of Tehillim Psalms. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of what? Your bayat, your house, your dwelling place, your almighty Yahweh. And you shall make them to drink of the Naha, the rivers. The river of your pleasures. The pleasures of Almighty Yahweh. You mean they flow like a river? It cannot be stopped. It is full of life, movement. Hallelujah. Talk about the pleasures of Almighty Yahweh, Israel. We experience pleasure, but it doesn't last. It's only for a moment. No matter what it is, Israel. Sin, it only lasts for a moment. And then, after that, it brings forth what? Yeah. Death. Yeah. But the pleasures of Almighty Yahweh, they do not end. Yeah. And the only thing that we gain out of that is high, high yield, the life yeah. of Torah, the life of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. That's what I want. I don't want what the world calls life or living, because it's not living, Israel. You work to ascertain what? A car? The car is only what? To get you to work, to get you around. What? That you work after things or to make someone else richer? That's all the system is for you, Israel. It's just a system of bondage. Yahweh hasn't designed this system that we are encased in, Israel. Hallelujah. But just as I told one, uh, just as he delivered Israel out of Mizraim, Shall he deliver his people? And even in the midst of Mizraim, even in the midst of that bondage, they were in Gosha. Yes. All they needed was right there. They didn't need the trinkets from the Egyptians yes. or that that came from Pharaoh. They had all they needed. Why? Because Yahweh provided all they needed, Israel. Yes. Yahweh provides all that we need. Yes. All he looks for us to do is just to step out in the Muna. That's all he wants us to do, Israel. Even in this system, this present system that we're in, everything we should do should be by Imuna. Yes, Hallelujah. And he gives us that also, even in abundance, Israel. Well, sometimes, Zakin Yoramiah, it seems like there's not enough. There's plenty. There's plenty, Israel. All you have to do is just grasp onto it. Don't let the enemy distract, your, distract you from what Yahweh has in store for you, Israel. Because he does that. He tries that every day. He's a formidable foe. He doesn't give up. Hallelujah. But because of the abundance of, Yah of that which Yahweh gives Israel, yes. we are never without. Yes. Never without. Yes. Even though those that do not have means as we have, but as long as you have the Torah, the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh, you're never without. Yes. Suffering, you're never without. Yes. Yahweh, he puts us in each situation that we're presently in, yes. everything that we go through, everything that we endure, why? To prove us. Yes. To prove us, Yisrael. Yes. And yet, even in that, he's given us coal, all that we need. Yes. We just need to be coming, come into the understanding of that and realize what Yahweh is doing. Yes. What Yahweh has done. Yes. Has not he brought us this far? Yes. By Imuna Yisrael. Yes. Have we not progressed from what we were yesterday? We should have. For what we were a year ago. For what we were two or three years ago, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us move on. Yes. Yes. To Helium chapter 63. 
verse 3 I want to begin reading. Concerning the abundance of Almighty Yahweh, it should bring satisfaction to us as being the people of Israel. We should be more than satisfied with what Yahweh is doing, what Yahweh has done. Hallelujah. To hear Psalm 63, verse 3. Because it says your loving kindness is better than life. The loving kindness of Yahweh, it is better than this present life, what we endure. Just him waking us up this morning, it says Ahava, his loving kindness, Yisrael. Just being able to get up or to awaken with his presence surrounding us, with his Malachim being encamped around us, Yisrael. And it's better than this present life. So that we, he expresses it to Helium that my lips shall with, with a loud voice praise you, O Yahweh. I shall praise you. I shall lift up my voice in the assembly of the Kedushim and your tabernacle. When I'm all alone, O Yahweh, I shall lift up my voice because of all that you have done for me. Verse 4, so will I bless you, yet while I live, I shall barack you, yet while I live. Why? Because your loving kindness is better than life. So yet while I live, while I have high, while I have breath in my body, while I have the movement in my limbs, while I'm able to clap my hands, while I'm able to shout, I'm going to lift you up, almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Continuing in verse 4, he says, I will lift up my hands. Let us lift our hands up, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. He says, I will lift up my hands in your name. In your Hashem will I lift up my hands. Hands without sin, without guile. Hands that have been washed in the dome of Yahshua HaMashiach. Just in the lifting of your hands, Yisrael, we show the praises of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 5. He says that my nephesh shall be what? Satisfied. My nephesh shall be satisfied. As with morrow or halif. And with the fatness, deshin. Of your abundance, Almighty Yahweh. Did not I say that the fatness belongs unto Almighty Yahweh? Don't you know the marrow or the marrow that's even in the bone of our physical being is very important? Because that's where the strength of the bones come from. That's where the blood is produced. Very important. You must have the marrow. Also, you must have the fat. But Yahweh, he gives that to Israel, an abundance of his marrow. Of his overflowing, of his fat, he give it unto us, Yisrael. He said, and with my mouth shall I hallelujah, shall I barack you with joyful lips. Hallelujah. For this is the yam of abundance, Yisrael. Hallelujah. That Yahweh may pour out his ruah upon us this day. That the overflowing of the oil where he poured out in his abundance. Hallelujah. It cannot be contained, Israel. Also in 63, chapter 6, he says, I was a car. He said, I will remember you even upon my bed. What bed is that? When we raise up in the morning, the bed of afflictions, when I cannot stand with the strength of my physical man, Yet will I remember you, Yahweh, upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches. Are we not in the night season? Should not we be watching, Israel? Should we not be observing what Yahweh is doing? We should not be slumbering and sleeping at this time, Israel. But we should be awaiting the sound of the shofar. So let's not be like the five wise. Let's be like the five wise, but not like the five foolish versions, Yisrael. 
Let us be waiting and ready with our oil in our bosom, Israel. He said, I will meditate on you in the night watches. Don't you want Yahweh to restore us? To renew us? Hallelujah. To make us strong, Israel. How is he going to do that? I will answer that. Let us move on to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 11. Yahweh, he shall water us. He's going to give us the right fertilizer. He's going to purge out those things that are not of him. He's going to pull out the weeds. He's going to separate the wheat from the shaft. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 11. It says, for Yahweh, he has redeemed Yaakov, Yisraeliah. And ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Was not the one that was stronger than he, us, Yisraeliah? Were not we overcome or overtaken by sin, by iniquity? Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion. And shall flow together to the tub of Yahweh for wheat and for wine and for the oil in abundance, Yisrael. It says, for the young of the flock and of the herd, and their nephews shall be as what? A watered garden. Yes, yes. Have you ever seen a watered garden? Yes, yes, yes. It seemed like after the rain or after watering, the plants are that much luscious. Yes, they become more lively, Yisrael. Yes. So in the abundance of Yahweh, as he reigns upon Yisrael, yes, we shall receive in his abundance the strength the nurturing Israel, that we may raise, rise up out of our situations and out of our shortcomings. Because when you see a garden that is beaten down by the sun, by the elements, it looks somewhat harsh, does it not? But yet, just a little water or the rain upon that garden, it revives it. It sustains it. It keeps it, Israel. That's what Yahweh should do. Don't you see what's happening? Look, look outside. You see the rain? Does not Yahweh, he, sing the, he sends the rain in due season? Yeah. Hallelujah. And he shall send the former and the latter rain upon Yisrael yeah. in abundance. Why? That we will be a nation that is refreshed, yeah. that is renewed. That even though we have been beaten down, Yisrael, yeah, he is the one that shall bring us up. Yeah. He is the one that shall preserve us. He is the one that shall keep us. Moving back. And their nephew shall be as a watered garden, and they shall not sorrow anymore at all. Yes. Isn't this world full of sorrows, woes? But yet it reminds me of the old song, that when we get into the Shema, there'll be no more crying, no more dying, no more sickness, no more pain, no more sorrows, just right, yeah. Verse 13. This shall the virgin rejoice and the dance, both the young man and the old all together. So even the young man shall rejoice and shall move with the strength of Almighty Yahweh. And the old man all together. And he said, I will return their morning into joy. And I will comfort them. And I will make them to rejoice from their sorrows. The abundance of Yah. That's what we need, Yisrael. That's what, we, that's what we should desire. Verse 14. And he says, I will. Is that not his tough pleasure? Is that not what he desires? He says, I will feel. He said, I will feel the nephesh of the Kohi with fatness. With the fatness of Almighty Yahweh. And my people shall be satisfied with my tub, says Almighty Yahweh. When, I, when Almighty Yahweh makes a proclamation, Yisrael, it stands. 
No matter how we feel, Yisrael, it stands. He says that his tough shall be in abundance, and it shall satisfy our love, Yisrael, says Almighty Yahweh. Let's move on to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7. Has our Yahweh elected a people, Yisrael? Yeah. They elect us because we were mighty or so numerous we cannot be counted? No, it's because we were few in number. Because we were few. But yet, in the abundance of Yahweh, we are made great. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7. It says that Yahweh did not set his Ahava upon you. Does not his Ahava come in abundance, Israel? Yes. Upon you, nor did I choose you because you were more in number than any people. For it says here, for you were the fewest. Is that what it says in Torah, Israel? It says that we are the fewest of all people. But because Yahweh, he has loved us, and because he would keep the oath of the promise, which he had sworn to our, our, fathers, our fathers, and Yahweh, he has brought you out with a mighty hand, and has redeemed you out of the house of bondmen. For the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Mizraim. Did he not bring Israel out of Egypt with a strong and almighty hand? With the abundance of his Ahava, Israel? Then why do we think that Yahweh cannot bring us out now? Why do we doubt that Yahweh, does he change? No, he never changed. Never changes. So why do we think that he's not going to do the same Today, with us, with his deliverance, or with the abundance, Israel, of his riches. Turn with me to Genesis, Bereshit chapter 32. The riches of Yahweh. He desires us to be free, Israel, that we may serve him, that we may offer. A pure offering unto him, Yisrael. See, what the world do, they bind you. They keep us for offering the offering that is due unto Almighty Yahweh. Not only do they bind us by what surrounds us, homes, land, whatever, but the Satan, he tries to get us in the spiritual realm, Yisrael, by the mind. In our heads, like they say, you have to get in the heads. Is that, is that not the, the strategy in football games or any kind of activity of that nature? They said for you to overcome the enemy, you have to get in their minds. Is that right? So we must have the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach to overcome all things Israel. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. All right. Genesis 32, chapter 11. He says, to deliver me. I pray you from the hand of my brother, for the hand of Esau. He says, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the sons. And you, Yahweh, said that I will surely do you right. And he said, I will make your zira, your seed, as the sands of the sea. Did not he say that, Yisrael? So was he going to allow Esau to destroy him, to overcome him? Why? Because, see, he remembered the promise that he has set upon him. That your zira shall be as numerous or as abundant as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. There cannot be a number put on it, Yisrael. So there cannot be a number put on the zero of the seed of Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because it's in abundance. He said that his zero or the children of Israel shall be as the sands of the sea. So what is that saying? What is that saying? It's saying that man cannot put a number on it. 
But Yahweh, he knows the number. Even the hair that is on our heads, he knows every number of the hair that is upon your, your head, Yisrael Yah. So he's not going to cause one of us to fall. He's not going to let the enemy overcome any of us, Yisrael Yah. But we shall stand in the strength of what? His promises. The strength of the abundance of his mishvah and the abundance of his ahava. Hallelujah. Let us move on to Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 45. Concerning the abundance of Yahweh and Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. I brought Yahweh for the abundance, even the abundance of the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. For it's by the dom that we are cleansed from cold, from all of our sins, Yisrael, from all of our iniquity. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and shall pursue you and overtake you till you be destroyed. Why? Because you listen not to the voice of Yahweh, your Abba. Is that the judgment of Almighty Yahweh? So should we hearken? Should we listen unto the voice of Almighty Yahweh? Whether the judgment or the word come from our ark or from our Ahot, Israel, Yah. Should we not take heed? Should we not hearken? And keep his commandments and his statutes which he has commanded you. Verse 46. And they shall come and they shall be upon you for a sign and for a wonder upon your zira forever and ever, Israel. His commandments. It shall be a statue that we should sarkah, that we should remember through all our generations, Yisrael Yah. So even at this event, even at we, how we are gathered today, Yisrael Yah, we should teach it to our children. For our children are our progeneration. They are the ones that have come after us, Yisrael Yah. So we must teach this to our children, that they may understand the purpose of these hog, of these days, sukkah. We must make it an enjoyable um, experience for them. That they want to obey the Torah, the Mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh. Don't you know they watch us also at this time, Yisrael? Sarai and, and Abner, they helped me put up my sukkah. So while they, we was putting up the sukkah, I explained to them the purpose and the reason for it. So I allowed them to take part in it. Hallelujah. And they enjoy themselves. And I enjoy having them with me. We should allow our children to participate. We should not hold them back, Yisrael. We should not keep them from the Torah, from Yahshua HaMashiach. Did not say allow them to come unto him, the little children, the bane. Hallelujah. So let us express our hava to them by obeying the Torah, the Mitzvah of Almighty Yahweh. That's what Yahweh desires. He said that this should be a mitzvah upon you and your zira, your seed forever. Verse 47. Because you serve not Yahweh, your Abba, with joyfulness. Why would we not want to serve Almighty Yahweh with joyfulness? Knowing all that he has done, Yisrael Yah. And with gladness of left. Why? And for the abundance of all things. Of all things, Yisrael Yah. He has given us so much. So much, Israel, y'all. It cannot be expressed. Don't you know that the cattle upon a thousand hill belongs to Almighty Yahweh? Yet through the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach, the obedience, he had made us heirs and joint heirs with Yahshua HaMashiach. So the great possessions, it all belongs to Israel. It has been given unto us, Israel. In the abundance of his promises and of his statutes. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 19. Let us move there, Yisrael. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 19. Hallelujah. The abundance of Almighty Yahweh. You know, if we would just take time and just look back. And, and just study for a moment what Yah 
has done for us and where he has brought us from. We all were in a horrible pit of sin, of bondage, not knowing our way. But yet he reached way down and picked us up. Even in our sufferings, he heard our cries unto him. Is that not, it's not that he doesn't hear us, Yisrael. He does hear the cries unto him. Hallelujah. He shall move. Just as he moved at Mizraim, he shall bring us out, Yisrael. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 19. Ahava, therefore, the stranger... For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Were we not strangers, Israel? Yes. Verse 20. And you shall fear Yahweh, your Abba. Him shall you serve, and him shall you cleave or hold on to, and swear by his name. We should do all things by the name of Almighty Yahweh. For the name of Yahweh is a strong and a mighty tower, and the Sadiq they run there. We run into the name of Almighty Yahweh, and we are saved, we are preserved, we are kept. Verse 21. Yahweh, he is your praise. And he is your sovereign master, our ruler. He's the one that commands us, Yisrael. That he has done for you these great and terrible things. Have these things he's done for us been great, mighty, and terrible? Yes, right, y'all. Which our eyes have seen. Verse 22. He said, your, avaj, your fathers went down into Egypt with 70 persons. And now Yahweh, your Abba, has made you as the stars of the Shemayim's for multitude. As the stars of the Shemayim for multitude. Isn't there a great number of stars, Israel? Yeah. Well, Yahweh, he has made us great. Even though we are small in number, but yet because of the abundance that he has given unto the house of Israel, we are made Gadol, we are made great. Yeah. Numerous. And abundance, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahweh, he does all things in his abundance. He doesn't slack off on anything he does, Yisrael. Not his Torah, he doesn't slack off. His judgments, they do, they do not slack off, Yisrael. His promises, they don't slack off. But he has given it to us in abundance, in muchness, Yisrael. They do not run out. The well, it doesn't run dry. Our millboro, it shall always have wheat in it, Yisrael. Because of what Yahweh has done. He has done so much, Israel. Hallelujah. In his abundance. Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 21. The great abundance bestowed upon the nation of Israel. Shall we return? Shall we shoot? Have we not for a time walked away from the Mishfah, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? So when, there, when rebuke comes... When his reproof come, is that not his love unto us, house of Israel? For if he did not ahava us or love us, he will allow us to continue in the wrong paths. So he correct us and he reproves us what? Why? That we may shoot, that we may turn, that we may return unto him, unto his Torah. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 21. He said, yes, 40 years did you sustain them. In the wilderness. Where would we be in this wilderness age, Israel, without Yahweh sustaining us, keeping us? So that they lack nothing. Nothing. It says that their clothes wax not old, neither did their feet swell. Moreover, you gave them kingdoms and nations. Don't you know Yahweh has given us the kingdom? The nations of the world, Yisrael, yeah, and did divide them into corners. And they possessed the land of Sheol, and the land of the king of Heshbon, and the land of Og, king 
of Bashan. It says that children also multiplied. You as the stars of the Shemayims, and brought them into the land concerning which you had promised to their fathers that they should go and to and possess it, Israel. Don't you know there's a land that we should possess or a ritz? There's a property that Yahweh has given unto all Yisraya that we should enter into. And it is more than just a physical place, Yisraya. It's more than just that. It's a place that Yahweh desires us to be in the Ruah. It's a place that Yahweh desires us to be in his Ahava, Yisraya. Are we there? Hallelujah. Have we made it to that place? He has promised it unto Yisraya. Come on, Yisraya. Let us lighten up. Hallelujah. Why? Why is that King Yeramia? Because Yahweh, don't you know Yahweh has already made this thing easy for us? All we have to do is obey his Torah and his Mishra. Yahshua HaMashiach, he's already plowed the roads. The seeds have already been laid in our lives, Yisrael Yah. Did he not? He write the Torah, the Mishra of Yah, and all of him. He had planted the seeds there. So as the Torah waters... As the Torah grooms and it rips out those things, the, 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 the weeds and things of that nature, Yisrael, yeah, he allows us to grow in his mishpah. So we as a people, we should rejoice today. We should be happy at what Yahweh has done. We should be happy on what Yahweh has provided for us in Yahshua HaMashiach. In what? Is, it, is he slack concerning his promises? No, he is not slack. But his promises, his misfire, it comes to us in abundance, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we should be more than happy. Yeah. This race, this war, it's not for us to fight. This is war is Yahweh's. So all we have to do is to abide, Israel, yeah, in his misfire and his Torah. Hallelujah. Verse 24. So the children went in and possessed the land, and you subdued therefore them and their habitation. You overcame them, subdued, brought them into submission. The Canaanites and gave them into their hands with their kings and the people of the land that they might do with them as they would. And they took strong cities and a fat land. We should take the cities, Israel. And the fat of the land. Yahweh has given that to us already, Israel. And the fruit trees in abundance, so that they did eat and were filled and became fat. Are we eating today, Israel, of the riches of Almighty Yahweh that he has given us, of the fruits of the peri? So let us become fat, overflowing with the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. For it is in him that we have our victory. It is in Yahweh that we overcome all things, Israel. And delight themselves in your great tub. Yes, yes. Verse 26. Nevertheless, it says, they were disobedient and rebelled against you. And cast your Torah behind their backs. Did it not say that, Yisrael? Yeah. Even after all that Yahweh has brought them through, he has brought us through the same way, Yisrael. Yeah. With abundance, outstretched hands being victorious over all things. But yet, if we do not continue in his mishvah and his Torah, or we walk in obedience or in the rebellion of Almighty Yahweh, those things shall be taken away, Israel. So we have to abide. We have to maintain ourselves in the mishvah of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Yet they were disobedient and rebelled against you. And cast your Torah behind their backs. And slew your Nabi, which testified against them, to turn them unto you. Did I not talk about the turning? Or we should shoo at the reproof, at the correction of Almighty Yahweh. And they worked great provocations. Therefore, you delivered them into the hand of their enemies. Who did it? Yahweh. Who vexed them. And in, time, and in the time of that trouble, when they cried unto you, you heard them from the Shemaims. Hallelujah. So yet Yahweh, because we are his chosen, Yisrael, 
He said we shall be as the sands of the sea. We are his people. He said even though those situations that we have placed or he has placed us in. Why? Because of our disobedience. Because of our transgression. Yet his ear, it is still open, Yisrael. His ahava still flows in abundance. Did he not reprove Yisrael for their sins? Hallelujah. Did I not just read the judgment of Almighty Yahweh? Yet he did not forsake his house, did he, Israel? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yahweh, he has not forsaken us. Hallelujah. He is still yet with us, Israel. Yeah. So let us not discount the trials or the fiery judgments of Almighty Yahweh. For it's just to prove us. It's to cleanse us. It's to cause us to turn, to shoe, that we may head in the right direction. That's the desire of any father, of any Emma, any mother, is to rear their children. To show them the right way, to lead them in the right path, and sometimes you have to apply the rod. Why? That the foolishness may be driven from them. So Yahweh, He has to apply the rod to our backsides, Israel, right, to drive away the foolishness. Why? That we may understand what He is speaking unto us. That we may give our ears attentively unto His commandments and His instruction. Those of you that have children. I had experience with children. Don't you want them to obey what you tell them and your instruction? No, that is wrong. This is right. So you give them what? A debris. You give them a commandment. You give them instruction. And don't you expect them to follow, don't you? Yeah, the same with Almighty Yahweh. He expects us to follow his correction. Is that not right, Israel? He desires us to follow. And when we do, he rewards us, Yisrael, with abundance. Hallelujah. I do that with my children. When they're obedient, I reward them with an abundance. But when they're disobedient, still there's a reward of abundance. And it comes from the same love. So I love them even when I chastise them. They get a spanking. As they will say, the Ahava is still yet the same, Yisrael, so even the judgments of Yahweh, as crude as they may seem, it is a hava, Yisrael. Yah. It is all the same. So he gives us his judgment in abundance, just as he give us his ahava in abundance. It is all the same, Yisrael. Yah. Hallelujah. So Yahweh, he cannot be, be contained. You cannot put a measure on him, Yisrael. Yah. And according to your manifold mercies, you gave them... Deliverance. Have not Yahweh given us deliverance, Yisrael? Yeah. Has he not given us a way out in Yahshua HaMashiach? Yeah. Who had delivered them out of the hand of their enemies. Verse 28. But after they had rest, it says again, they did evil again before you. Therefore you left them in the hand of your enemies. Don't you know that the wicked, the Rasha, there are the, they are the swords of Almighty Yahweh. So it says here that Yahweh has left them, or he has left us, Yisrael, Yah, in the hands of the enemies, so that they have the dominion over them. Yet when they returned and cried unto you, you heard them from the Shemayims. And many times did you deliver them according to your abundance of your mercies. Has not Yahweh done that, Yisrael, Yah? Time after time, again, have we fallen short of the honor of Almighty Yahweh. But yet, he is still faithful, Yisrael. He has not forsaken us. Yet, he still sends his word to deliver us, to give us a way out of, of, of all things, Yisrael. A few verses in Exodus chapter 1. I'm going to read verse 1, I mean verse 6 through 7. And then we're going to move on to Yakahana in chapter 10. Hallelujah. Concerning the great abundance of Almighty Yahweh. I know that's the only reason why I'm here, Yisrael. I need his Ahava in abundance. I need his patience in abundance, Yisrael. Without measure. Exodus chapter 1, verse 6 and verse 7. It says that Yosef, he died. And all of his brothers and all that generation. 
And the sons of Israel yet were fruitful and increased, it says, abundantly. Who did the increasing? Who preserved the house? Israel, Yahweh, Almighty Yahweh preserved Israel, the generation. Abundantly, and they multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty, overcoming everything, every obstacle. They were not stumped, Yisraya. And the land was the were filled with them. And the abundance. So shall it be with us, Yisraya, the true nation of Almighty Yahweh. For his zero, it shall not cease. It shall not be stopped. But he shall continually allow them to multiply. Look at the gardens. When you plant a seed, whether it's an ochre plant or an ochre seed, it matures, it comes up, it flowers, does it not, Yisraya? And it produces the fruit of the okra. Well, when that okra or that fruit drops and it's dried up and the seeds dry, yet that is a progeneration of that okra plant. And all it takes is for the same process to take forth, Yisraya. The watering, it causes it to come alive. And what does it do? It continues on in that same path or in that same circle. So does the house of Israel. Hallelujah. It is Yahweh that keeps us. And Yahweh that calls the abundance of his mercy to continue to multiply. That which has been planted in the Levim or in our heart to be multiplied, Israel. And it's not going to stop. The enemy can't stop it. The enemy cannot stop that which Yah with Almighty Yahweh has spoken. Yakahana chapter 10, verse 10, I want to begin reading to verse 18. As I bring this to a close, Israel, Yah. The abundance of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. He's been so tough unto us, Israel, Yah. And he is always tough. Yakahana verse 10, verse 10. It says that the thief, he comes not but for to steal. That's what the enemy does, Yisrael. He tries to steal the riches of the wealth of Almighty Yahweh from the love of Yisrael. And to kill and to destroy. But Yahshua says that I have come that they may have life, or the high yield, and that they may have it, what? More abundantly. That's why Yahshua came, Yisrael. That we may have this life in the role of Almighty Yahweh more abundantly. He says, I am the tough shepherd. And the tough shepherd, it, he gives his life for the sheep. Have not Yahshua HaMashiach given his life for us, Yisrael? Could the offering or the life of any other man be sufficient? So the life that Yahshua again was, it was enough. It was plenty. It was more abundant, Yisraya, for each and every member of Yisraya to see to receive the salvation of Almighty Yahweh. He said, "I give my life for the sheep, but he that is a howling and not the shepherd, whose own catches, whose own the sheep are not, he sees the wolf coming." And leaves the sheep, and he flees. That's what a harling does, Yisrael. And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. It says in verse 13 that the harling flee. What, what would have happened if Yahshua would have fleed? If he would have ran away from being impaled on the stake? We would not have redemption. There will not be a way for us to enter into the throne or come into the throne of Almighty Yahweh boldly as children. So he did not flee as a hireling. But because of the Ahava and what Yahweh has placed on his palate, Yisraeli, he obeyed all that he had, he had done. What well, Yahweh has commanded him. Why? Because he saw you and I, Yisraeli. Not only did he, did he do it because of the commandments of Almighty Yahweh, but because of the abundance of the Ahava of, of his love. He gave his life for his sheep. It says in verse 13 that the hireling flee 
because he is a hireling and cares not for the sheep. Aren't you glad that Yahshua, he cared? The abundance of his Ahava to the house of Israel. Yeah. He said in verse 14 that I am the tough shepherd. And he says, I know. I know my sheep. And I am known of mine. Don't you know Yahshua HaMashiach today, Israel? Yeah. Hallelujah. Verse 15, he said, as the Abba, he knows me, even so I, the Abba, and I lay down my life or my high for my sheep. Why? As he said um, at first, as we began reading, that we may have life more abundantly, Israel. What, what, what the world calls life isn't life, Israel. What the world calls living is not living. This is not the things that Yahshua desires us to press after. But he desires us to press after the things of the kingdom. So we should lay up our riches or our wealth or our desires and the things that are in the Shemayans. Not what lies on the earth beneath Israel. Yahshua didn't give his life for us to possess these things. But that we may possess the high of Almighty Yahweh more abundantly. More abundantly. That's what we should desire, Israel. Verse 16. And other sheep have I which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice. And, they, and there shall be just one fold. So he's going to bring those that are scattered abroad all into one fold, Israel. And there shall only be one shepherd. Verse 17. Therefore does my Abba here have me, because I laid down my life that I might take it up again. He says, no man takes it from me, but I lay it down, I lay it down of myself. It was of his own will, of his own doing, Israel. He said, I have the power to lay it down. He says, I have the power to take it back up again. This commandment have I received of my Abba. So Yahshua, he had the power to lay his life down. Because of the Ahava that he had for Yisrael and for the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, he laid it down. And just as he laid it down, he had the power also to bring it back up once again, Yisrael. Don't you know that the rock of Yahweh, of Yahshua HaMashiach, abides in the house of Yisrael? So even at our latter time, as we face the last days, if I may say, Yisrael, it's by the Ruach HaKodesh, the Ruach of Yahshua HaMashiach, that we shall be raised back, hallelujah, raised up again, in the power of Almighty Yahweh, having Teshua, or having the victory over the enemy, even death, hell, and the grave, hallelujah. Allow, these last few verses as I bring this to an end, Yisrael, I pray this been a, has been an inspiration to your life. And it's just an introduction into what we shall receive throughout this feast, Israel, of the abundance of Yahweh. Hallelujah. To hear the chapter 37, I want to begin reading. It says that the meek, but the meek shall inherit the Olam and shall delight themselves in the abundance of Shalom. The abundance of the shalom of Almighty Yahweh. I want this, the shalom of Yahweh in abundance, Israel. The world doesn't grant you shalom. They grant you a period of satisfying your flesh just for a moment, but that's not the shalom of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. Psalms 51, verse 1. I'm going to move on, Israel. That we says, Have mercy upon me, O Yahweh, according to your loving kindness. Yeah. According to the multitude of the abundance of your tender mercies. He says, blot out my transgressions. Yahweh has blotted out the transgressions of, Almighty, uh, of all Israel. Yah, through the dumb of Yahshua HaMashiach. Also in Psalm 66 verse 2. Sing forth the splendor of his name. Make his praise splendid. Verse 3, as I close, 
He says, say unto Yahweh, how awesome are you in your works. Let us say that, Yisrael. How awesome, almighty Yahweh, are you in your works. Through the greatness of your power, Yahweh, he says, he says, your enemy submit themselves unto you. Hallelujah. So we don't have any worries, Yisrael. For the enemies of Yisrael, they're submitted unto the power of Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because of the abundance that he has given his house. We are a powerful nation. We are a people above all people. We are a nation above all nations. Why? Because that's what Yahweh has given unto us. Hallelujah. Yahweh has given it. And what Yahweh has given the world cannot take it away. It reminds me of the song that we used to sing. The world can't give it, and the world sure can't take it away. Hallelujah. So let us take hold. Let us grasp unto the promises of Almighty Yahweh. Let us grasp unto the mishvah of Almighty Yahweh. Yes, right, yeah. And everything, everything should be all right. Hallelujah. Oh, we're going to make it, yes, right, yeah. We are overcomers. We prevail. Yisrael, yeah, we prevail. As long as we stay in the Torah and the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. 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 At this time, let us stand to our feet, Yisrael. Yeah. We, we, hallelujah. Yes, okay. All right. Hallelujah. 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 Just want to say something. Just sit down for one moment, you see, right now. Turn this on. It's okay. He'll come and dismiss us. Let me say this. Just go ahead and sit down for a moment. Uh, just for one moment. Uh, what a great a message of great riches. You know, I was sitting here thinking as Azakim was preaching. You know, Yah said that the Zira of Abraham, that we will be a blessing unto the nation. That whatever nation he sent us into, we will be a great blessing. And his riches shall pour from the loins. Of Yisrael. And yet we have been captivated by the doctrine that uh, because of Debarim 28, that all of that, even though it applies to Yisrael, that we are a people or the nation of Yisrael, it is an insignificant people. It is a great people. It is a mighty people. You all call us a Sugula, a peculiar people, like no one else. No nation like that nation. And whatever nation they go into, they subdue it, they have power. Just like in Mishraim, 70 people, and yet they dominated the very choices of land, the riches of the land. And this is the, and this is the beguiling of hell, although we think that these individuals are, are leaders of Yah, they're beguiling the minds of the people. We are people above all people. Yisrael is above the heathen. We bow the lies. And these are ignorant men. Search the Torah, Yisrael. As she tells us, search the Torah, for in it we think we have eternal life. And we are the ones that testify of him. I am a word of, eth a man of etymology. I look at one word. Look at the book, and one day I will teach it. On the word everlasting, or olam viat. Look up the word hukra, statues. And look at every scriptures that deal with this. And so man wants to pick out a certain, certain portion of that, apply it to him, and think he's above someone else. I think he has a spiritual right above someone else. You understand? And they're foolish men. They're foolish men. They're foolish men. And that's a fact. We have the abundance of Yah's riches. His Oshir, his Esha, Yoshua, Hamashiach. That's where his abundance comes. We have to have, uh, everyone is not a student of Torah. Everyone not, cannot bring out the essence of the power of Torah. That's why Shaul said to Timothy, people have taken that out of context. You must read the letter. That there were elders being rebuilt. You don't rebuke a Zakain unless it's in the, in the mouth or a witness against them of credible witnesses. You don't let them despise your youth. There are men that are seasoned men that understand the wisdom of Yah. Men that have labored in the Torah. You have Obadiah there. You have Zechariah there. These are elderly men. They're 90, 110. They know the Torah. These are men that experience the Torah. So he tells Timotheus, uh, you, uh, he tells Timotheus, you, 
You labor to meditate in the Torah, study to show yourself approved of the Yah, as a workman rightly uh, dividing. So when you confront these elders, they will not despise you. They will, will not say you're a stupid young man. They will not resist you and hate you. So the world tells everyone, uh, you study. How do you tell a man that can't hardly read or write? How does he study? How do you tell the masses of the nations to study when they can't even read? This is a dumb, arrogant nation. And the people of this nation, they're arrogant and haughty. They're hubris people. How do you tell someone that they can't even read? And the reason they say that because they're dishonorable men. You can't trust them. Because they don't trust no one. They will tell you, no, you don't trust nobody. Well, that's so stupid. Can I say this? I'm going to say it, whether you say I can or not. A man will let a strange man, those that they call Goem, those that they call heathens, though, and they will let that Caucasian or the white man go up in his woman, pull the baby out, cut him open like a damn hog. I will, man. And these are the beasts that instructs you in the ways of Yah. If I die, I die. This is how his wife just had his son, his, his hands that uh, and cut trees and build buildings and they get dirty and grungy. And came home, washed his hands and said, let it come. We're going to deliver this thing. That's right. Yet they will let a man cut them open. They trust his knowledge of the matter. They trust the prescription of drugs. They trust everything they hear on the news. How do you know they trust it? Because they repeat it. They repeat it. They constantly repeat it. And yet when it comes to the messengers of Yah, they all are dirty and skunk duggery. This is a stupid generation. I'm not going to stop saying that. I'm going to teach one day on the things that are ulam, everlasting, the statues of Yah. Yet they keep that statue. But what about these ten? What about these? You tell me that's prevalent and pertinent, but these ten are not? They're stupid. We have the power to do all things concerning. There's nothing. Not one offering, not one, uh, uh, I will use the word zabak or sacrifice, the command that has been done away with. But there are things that we cannot do until Yah establish his kingdom for his house. They're not done away with, uh, Yisra'ya, but in the power of Yeshua HaMashiach. Can you imagine how, come on, we only have less than 100 sheep out there. If we just, this little crowd here, everybody sacrifice one, won't be nothing left, will it? It's just stupid. It's stupid. So you must raise up men of strength and character. That's my prayer. Raise up the prophet, you have to know me, the messenger. May raise up the young men of strength. And you will know because they must be able to hear, they must be able to hear. He will not come by hearing. This is a generation that cannot hear. It is not willing to hear. The faith of Yah come by hearing. And hearing, it comes by the Dabarim, the promises. That is what the Dabarim, the, the word of Yah. It is the promise of the Abraham. We are a great people. We are a mighty nation. It is span every spectrum of skin complexion. That's why the coat of Yosef was the representation of Yisrael. It's amazing that those that think of the little turbans that they wear. That was a command given unto Aharon, his son, Salive. And this nation here says, uh, oh, they say, well, all of the tribe of Yehuda, you see, in America, Levi is there, and Ruban there. This is a stupid, and people buy it. Oh, oh, I'm of the tribe of Yehuda. How do you know that? Who told you that? The princes of the world didn't know Yahshua HaMashiach. They didn't know him, did they? If they had known him, they would have never impelled him. They didn't know who he was. Well, I'm of the tribe of Yahudi. Isn't that amazing? Because Yahshua came out of that tribe. So only those in America are the only one of Yahuda. So what about the little poor brother down there in Haiti? What about the one in China? What about the ones in Iran or Iraq? What about the ones in Cuba? No house of Yahuda there? Just we in America, we the only ones of Yahuda? Come out the same lineage of Yahshua, how she yeah? We're special, huh? His whole house is special. His whole house is special. 
So we are the tribe of Yahur and Benjamin, and yet, uh, well, Yisra'ya, then we're not Yisra'ya because uh, there's a great separation there between the two houses. So we are Ephraim, we are Yehuda, and there's Ephraim all over the world, huh? The doctors are crazy. And people buy because uh, they take the very young, ignorant minds and they press upon them. And they, you know, the words that they use, especially in scripture, I say, look how these men twist the word, man. They, they wretch the scripture to their own destruction. I see, I say, oh man, people are so dumb. They don't even see that. Look at Eskim, wasn't it? Black wasn't like that. It was black Eskim. But that's not what he was saying. It is kahad. That doesn't mean it has nothing to do with, the, with this ethnicity or whatever we want to call it. Should they take a faggot Jesus and paint him black? They take a punk Jesus and make him black? I'll say it. And I'm not going to repent. As I was talking to an elder this morning, called me last night out there in Kansas. Beautiful old man. They have robbed our minds. And I take full vengeance on that beast. I'm going to break the beast back. Damn their Jesus. Their vile Holy Ghost. I'm going to break the beast back. Where you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Damn the Holy Ghost. Has nothing to do with you. It's from the Sanskrit language. One of the 17 major languages of India. That deals with nothing but Hinduism. And they think, oh, we got the Holy Ghost, and they got on their six seeks and all of that. And they're stupid. I just look at them. Is that so, huh? Silly man. I don't back down from this wicked world. They're ignorant. That's why the Torah tells us we're going to be judged by every, every word that is sharp. It is vain. And they're injecting things. That's why the people are full of vanity. They're empty. They have no substance. Yisra'ya is a great people. The word Yisra'ya means that we have prevailed by the power of Yah. So how can we be Yisra'ya? As we know that all things work to the top of them that love Yah, even though we have, been, we have suffered in great in, in humility uh, 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 and great bondage, uh, that we still walk strong and we know who we are. We know who we are. And so they try to teach a culture. What does the culture, what is it based upon? There were people, a bunch of heathens that did every kind of wicked thing there is. Disobeying the above. Let's deal with the sin factor. Let's deal with the sin factor. We deal with the sin factor. We get the heart factor right. And once we get the heart factor right, then Yahweh can feed us uh, with the dynamicism of his truth. You understand? Uh, we can walk in that, Yisrael. We need strong men today. Not, not, not boys. We need strong men today. That's what we need. Raise up the prophet. The nobi, the navi'im, the mighty men. Raise them up. We need that. Our inability to proceed is because we cannot hear. We must begin the hearing to obey. And that's a fact. That's a fact. And so you're not righteous because you're vegan. Can I tell you this before I close? There was a man called me recently, sometime back. How he loved me and this and that. Coming to see you, coming this. And the first thing he asked me, uh, well, we are vegans here. I said, my family, we're vegans, so what? Who cares? We cook fried chicken, fried fish, steak, butchered one of those cows out there. You've never seen real cow meat till you see one of these butchered. That trash you buy in the store, that's trash. That's trash. Butcher chickens around here, the chicken bones are hard as a rock. That soft mess, mushy mess you buy, that's trash. We butcher lamb around here, it's a real lamb. You may be getting a cat out of the store, it's real. Butcher goat around here, it's a real goat. Go to them ponds and brim that big up there in that pond. Fish him out. Put the big bass back. I ain't talking here. Put the, Mama, put them big ones back. 
Now you keep them like that, but them big ones, you just put them back. They make big babies, all right? Put them back. Now don't mess with them, all right? I mean that. The other ones, get them out of there. For what? As Granny would say, for the grass. To put that in the grease. Nothing like what you buy at the store, chemically laced. Our babies, our minds are twisted. Our bodies can't function and excrete the waste in our bodies. Come on, Yisra'ya. You've never seen a real piece of beef until you've seen one of these cows butchered. That's real beef. It frightens you, it's so red. You say, what is that? That's the truth, Yisra'ya. That is the truth. We must tear down these schisms. And I don't care if no one stands for me, I'm going to tear it down. I am going to attack it. Because I am a warrior. And there's a cause greater than any of us, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Keep our minds on Yah. As Azokain told us, we're not going to allow our minds to be distracted. We're not offended to tell someone, no, you can't do that here. You don't be offended. The place you go to, they say, you can't come in here like that. You can't come in here. When I worked at IBM, it was no written code, but it was one unwritten. You reach a certain level, that were things you did not wear there. You did not wear that. You did not come in that corporation that way. You may have a dress down day, but it better be dressed down. That was a fact, Yisrael. I worked, I've never seen any of the women that were managers with pants on. I've never seen that. They may come in on Saturday like that. A Sunday, but during the week, never seen that. Never. And it was a fact. So where's the people of Yahweh dress according to his command? They encourage, I am. We're going to have a great time. What are we going to do? I don't know. What time are we going to eat? We need some batteries in that clock back there. To me. At four? Okay, four we will have dinner. I wanted to make that announcement. And then we get a little rest. And let's come back to the plaza and have fellowship. The, uh, the uh, weather report uh, did not call for rain. Just a little today, shower. We know it's going to be nice and warm the rest of the week. Sunshine because we're going to, you know, they have the big cookout. We're going to have service. We want to have service outside today and quite a few services outside. And we will do that, Yisrael. Just have a great fellow. This Sukkot, it is a time to unload, to take off the burden of our flesh. Forget about ourselves and fellowship with Yisrael. And to embrace one another. They hadn't seen one another for months. And they, when they saw them, it's a great embracing, sitting and eating. They would hear the reading of the Torah. That's what they were. That's what we've heard today. And they fellowship all day, all night. And they were sad to leave when they were separate on that last great day. It's sad that Yah's people don't even know how to come together. But yet they say they love each other, don't they? You come together, you got a group over here debating that, you got a group here debating that. You're not coming here with that. Don't think you're going to come here with that. You could take it somewhere else, but not here. Not here. Man came and said, those lines is pagan. I said, well, okay, let's look at the bed of Yah. Look, look at the tip of that Shilomobile. All right? It's not pagan, you're a silly individual. So get off these grounds. And that group, there was a group here with me when they saw what I did. There was one said, you know what, I appreciate that. I put three individuals on. One came from Canada, one came from Atlanta, and one came from Philly. You understand? He said, I was at Tabernacle last year, and there was a man, he came on the ground. He was so disruptive. Everybody was pensy and tense because he was there. You couldn't do anything because, you know, he had everybody. He's, I'm telling you, he said he had everybody subject to him. I said, not here. He said, I can appreciate what you did. You didn't uh, tolerate that and allow that to disrupt anything. You tell me you got a group of people, you're going to let some little hound dog come in there and disrupt everything. And you, and you get so pensy, you're afraid to say anything. You are a bunch of cowards then. Come on, Zakin. He's going to dismiss it. Yabrak. Wasn't that an excellent truth today? Hallelujah. Strong big man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet, Israel. Hallelujah. And let us enjoy this beautiful day that Yahweh has given us. But it rains, I can't. It's still a beautiful day. Why? Because Yahweh created it. Hallelujah. You'll never see this day. Once this day passes, Israel, you're not going to see this day again. So while today is today, let us barack Yahweh. Let us enjoy this day together in fellowship. Hallelujah. I'll be Yahweh, we do barack you for another day that you have made. For truly your tender mercies and your loving kindness have encamped around about us. We do ask Yahweh that you would strengthen those in their Muna, Yahweh, those that are weak, Yahweh. That you encourage and strengthen them by your Torah. And those that are feeling pains and things in their bodies, I'll be Yahweh. That you would make them whole, Yahweh. Make them complete. Abba Yahweh, in all things. We do give you Toda and we barak you for all things, for the message, for those that have gathered with us, Abba Yahweh, and also all that you will feed us and give to us on this day. In all things, we do barak you. In the precious and mighty name of Yahshua, Messiah, we do cry out, Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah Yahweh! Yahweh Barak, Ko Yisrael, Hallelujah!